Welcome. Thank you so much for spending the time to watch this video. I really appreciate you um, tuning in today. Um, so my name is Kathleen Carr. Uh, I am the owner of Assurance Home Service. We're a home watch company and today's presentation is about preparing your home for an extended absence. Assurance Home Service is a company that my husband and I started five years ago because the residents of this community were asking us to provide this service and we saw it as a need um, that we could, you know, that we had um, the education necessary to um, assist homeowners when they're gone. Um, so I just wanted to kind of uh, set the barometer for today's class. Um, I know that when you're getting ready to leave um, to go on vacation or, you know, go to a second home, there's, uh, it's always a bit of a hectic time um, and you want to make sure that you're making the right decisions with regards to the home that's going to be vacant. Um, so today's class is really meant to you know kind of initiate some discussion and some thought and um, and give you some really practical tips um, as well as advice uh, for what to do before you leave home to make sure to minimize the risk um, you know of things that could go wrong when you're um, you know when you're gone the one uh, sort of a caveat that I would include is um, with regards to any utilities like water, um, gas, electricity, I would highly recommend that you contact a professional regarding these items. Um, the you know the risk of a of water pipe bursting and you know causing just a tremendous amount of damage in your home is low, but still I think it's um, very helpful to seek out the recommendations of a plumber or an electrician um, regarding your home because they would know your situation best and they would be able to give you the best advice. Um, so part of leaving is making your house look lived in from the outside. Um, one of the main um, kind of the main focuses of that would be making a decision on what to do with your mail. Um, you may want to have your mail forwarded or perhaps even have your mail held. Um, I would recommend that you um, just you know check out your options at usps.com or perhaps go to the post office and have a conversation and find out um, what um, would best suit your needs. I would just point out that this is a free service. There are lots of private companies that try to you know, sell you on this service, but USPS will never charge you for this. Um, the other um, company or you know, person that you may want to check um, with or notify is your, if you have a subscription newspaper, make sure to reach out to them. Or all of you should receive a free newspaper, the Sunday newspaper. Uh, make sure to contact uh, them as well, just to let them know that you're going to be gone so that those newspapers won't kind of pile up at the end of your driveway. Um, you may also want to ask someone to collect the items that are left by your front door. Um, oftentimes, um, there's flyer, you know, people that come around and put flyers on your front door, or there might be a package that is inadvertently delivered to your home. You're going to want to make sure that someone is looking for those and that you've directed that person as to what to do with any pack packages or flyers. Um, I think it's also important from a security standpoint to have some lighting on outside your home. You may want to put at least one how up one light on a timer um, and always make sure <laughs> that you put new light bulbs in these lights before you leave. Um, you may also find that you want to install a motion activated sensor light on an outdoor floodlight such as the a light um, outside of a patio door, sliding glass door, or perhaps over your driveway. Um, as far as within your community or within your neighborhood, you may want to notify a neighbor or two that you're going to be gone just so that you have someone that either drives by or walks by or looks at your home on a regular basis and they can spot anything that looks unusual and notify you. The Huntley Police Department also has um, a way for you to put in a vacation house watch request. This is to notify that them that you're going to be gone. And I've included a link to their website. Um, you can do this all online. It's a pretty simple process. And this is just you reaching out to them to let them know that you're not going to be in your home. 
Other things um, to consider when preparing the outside of your home, um, consider having someone remove the snow, depending on the time of the year that you're going to be gone, remove the snow, or you may also want to have someone mow your lawn. Um, with the removing the snow option, I know it's always, um, you know, a little bit kind of a, of a, a, a you know, weighing your options. Um, you certainly, um, if you're going to be gone, you're not going to be driving over your driveway or kind of walking up those, walking up your sidewalk. Um, so it's tough to pay for a service that you're not really getting the benefit from. However, um, by, by having your snow removed, it does make your home look a little bit more lived in. I know personally, when I drive around the home in the community, um, I, I see homes where the snow hasn't been shoveled and it's obvious that the snow has been shoveled in a long period of time. I always feel uncomfortable because I feel that that is giving me information that I don't want to have. <laughs> I just want to think that, you know, everybody's in their homes and, you know, and the, the homes are lived in. And, um, so I would consider having someone remove the snow. Um, if you have an extra key hidden outside your ho um, home, um, please remove it before you leave. Um, you may also want to make sure to secure all patio furniture, grills, tattoos, anything that it, you're leaving outside. Because as we all know, the winds can be pretty severe and you'd want that and those items to stay in place. Um, the outdoor faucets on your home... Um, I would consider winterizing them. Um, generally, that is kind of a styro piece of styrofoam that you put over those faucets, especially the faucets on the north side of the home. I remember probably about 15 years ago, uh, it was in, I think, like late February, early March, I drove up to a home. It was on a cul-de-sac and there was just water gushing out of the outdoor faucet because it had cracked and it was leaking and it had been gushing out I, I, for, for a longer period of time for hours. And at, when I, by the time I got there, the whole street was starting to flood too. So you're going to want to make sure to, to protect those. Um, it's kind of jumping to the inside of your home. Um, it is just as we've talked about, it's important to prepare the outside of your home. It's also important to prepare the inside of your home. Um, the first bullet pointed um, item regarding the curtains or the blinds. Again, that's kind of like the snow item a couple of slides back. It's a little bit you know, controversial. Um, some people you know, want the snow removed from their driveway and sidewalks. Other people don't. Um, some people like to leave their curtains or blinds open. Other people don't. Um, personally, I like to close the curtains or blinds so that people cannot see inside my home, although other people think that leaving them open makes the home look more lived in. So again, you have to do what it feels comfortable to you. Um, I would also, as simple as the next item sounds, I would just recommend that you physically go around and check to make sure that all of the locks on your windows work and are secure and your locks are closing. Um, we ran into the situation a couple of years ago that um, unfortunately the homeowner had left. We came in for the first time to check the home. We were walking through the home and found out that one of the windows, the lock was broken. So it was, it was physically impossible to, to lock it without getting that fixed first. The homeowners, um, I just don't think we're aware of it. And you know, that window needed to be fixed. Um, the other item, um, again, that it, I know we, we think we all won't do it, but we've uh, come in to check the home for a uh, check a home for the first time and a door was left unlocked, you know, kind of in the rush of, of getting ready to leave and to pack and um, things get overlooked. Um, so again, just make sure to check everything very thoroughly as you walk out of your home for the final time. Uh, safety deposit boxes are readily available at local banks. I would highly, con um, highly recommend that you, um, you know, secure a safety deposit box if you don't already have one and put all your valuables in one. Um, if you do have any house plants, uh, please consider arranging to have someone water them and then also put them all together in one space if possible, maybe a bathtub or a sink, depending on the light situation, so that it's easier for that person to water them. Um, if you will talk about this more in a few slides, um, but if you're going to uh, if you have houseplants and somebody is going to be watering them for you and you're shutting off the water in your home in the weeks leading up to your departure, you may want to start um, 
collecting like empty milk jugs or orange juice bottles, filling them up with water, and then leaving them for the person that's watering your house plants so that they will have water readily available even though the water in your home is turned off. Um, I've heard from many homeowners in the community that, well, maybe not many, but several um, that have come back from an extended absence and their garbage disposal is stuck or broken because um, it hasn't been used in a couple of months. Um, to kind of offset that um, possibility, you may want to spray um, like a Pam or some sort of cooking spray into your garbage disposal just to keep that um, those parts lubricated so that they would be a little bit less likely to stick upon your return. Um, other items to consider with regards to your t utilities are um, or you know appliances and devices around your home uh, in order to kind of reduce the drain on your electricity you may want to go around and unplug as many small appliances or electronic devices as possible um, if you are leaving any electronical devices on um, while you're gone you may want to purchase a surge protector and plug those into a surge protector um, in case um, you know, for some reason you would have a, a electrical surge in your home. Um, an example of an electrical device that you may want to leave on would be your router if you need to continue to have uh, Wi-Fi services in your home while you're gone. Um, with regards to um, the HVAC system in your home, I would encourage you to reduce the temperature in your home um, to about 58 degrees or so. Um, again, it's really whatever um, you you feel comfortable. I probably wouldn't go much below 58 degrees, um, just because we you know we want to make sure that the temperature is adequate um, adequate in your home for the duration of while you're gone. Uh, you may also want to consider installing some sort of home monitoring system that connects to your smartphone or your tablet or your laptop so that you can monitor the temperature of your home while you're away. Uh, with regards to gas devices, um, let's say if you would have like a, a gas stove, you may want to consider shutting off the valve to that um, that particular stove or to that gas appliance. Um, if that's not possible, then you could shut off the gas at the meter unless you have gas heat, obviously. Plumbing. Um, water is a very erosive element and even a small leak can cause major damage in your home. I think the most important thing is that you, again, you talk to a plumber, you get their recommendations as to what you should do. Um, I've heard that many of them will say shut off you know your main water valve so that you do not have water uh, coming into your home while you're gone uh, but you know again have that conversation first before you would do that um, if you you may also want to consider shutting off the water valves at any appliances that require water such as your washing machine your toilet sinks dishwashers things like dishwasher things like that um, as we talked about in a few previous slides, also winterize your outdoor faucets so you minimize the risk that they're going to break or leak. Um, and then especially if you have a basement with a sump pump, you may want to have, um, so you may want to install some sort of water or moisture monitoring device so that you would be notified if you have a leak in your basement. Uh, many water heaters have what's called a vacation setting. Uh, you may want to lower the temperature to that vacation setting on your hot water heater. And then also with regards to your um, toilets, consider putting plastic wrap over your toilet so it minimizes the evaporation that occurs in that bowl. Utilities. Uh, for your phone, for those of you that still have a landline in your phone, uh, please consider forwarding all of your adding call forwarding if you don't already have it, and then forward all of your calls, your landline calls, to your cell phone. It's a pretty easy process, and it you know works very seamlessly. The people that call generally do not even know that their their call has been forwarded to your cell phone. Um, with regards to cable and internet, you may want to check with your service provider to see if you can put that service on hold. Um, although when you have that conversation, 
also check about um, what it, what if any fees may be applied to your account when you're ready to take that service off of off of being on hold and reinstate it. Uh, as far as your garbage collection, uh, again, you may want to put that service on hold for the months that you're not going to be using it. Um, and then overall for your utilities, if you feel comfortable with it, it may be beneficial for you to have um, online access to your accounts. Um, this would be for you to, you know, kind of log in and pay your accounts or maybe even just check the balance and then you could mail a check to the utility companies. Um, this would be um, to minimize the, you know, the risk that you're going to miss something that would normally be coming in the mail. Uh, I know at this point I kind of just wanted to take a pause um, through the, the presentation for the past 15 minutes or so. I've been you know, encouraging you to notify neighbors that you're going to be gone, um, notify the police department, um, contractors such as a plumber, um, and then notify your utility companies. Um, obviously, the more people you notify, um, the more perhaps chance that there would be a break-in or a problem when with your home while you're gone. Um, again, this is really up to your comfort level. Um, I have a friend who is absolutely convinced that her parents' home was broken into because she made the call to the garbage company. She said while she was notifying this person that she, you know, her parents are going to be gone, she just got a, a a pit in her stomach and realized that it was a phone call that she should not have made, that it would have just been better to pay the garbage bill and not then to tell this person that her parents were not going to be home. I think you have to go with your gut on a lot of these things. Well, and then also, um, you know, gut and then also perhaps common sense that you just want to be careful about how many people know that you're going to be gone. Um, we're going to talk about social media in a, in a few minutes, but certainly not, you know, post that information on social media um, as well. Um, in some kind of, you know, general uh, recommendations for home preparation, um, please, please, please make sure that your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors are working properly. Um, I came into um, a home I don't know, about, I don't know, several months ago um, where the carbon monoxide detectors uh, were both beeping um, at the same time. It was a matter of their, um, unfortunately, a carbon monoxide detector has a life expectancy. Um, I believe it's between like seven and 10 years. Um, I, and then, you know, the, the beeping was just such that um, I needed to exit the home, notify the homeowner, and then call the fire department because that was, you know, that was what we thought was the proper protocol to do. The fire department came in, they inspected the home, they were absolutely phenomenal, um, and then just notified me that it was you know, kind of a coincidence <laughs> that both carbon monoxide detectors were beeping, um, and then it just meant that they were at the, uh, the end of their life. But obviously there's no way for me to know that, um, but thankfully they were there and they knew that. Um, I would also make sure to dispose of any um, food, kind of go through your refrigerator and dispose of any food before, that could go bad before you return, um, as well as obviously take out all the trash. Um, if say you're leaving on a Friday and your you know, trash day isn't to the following Tuesday, you may want to contact someone to, to take that out for you and then obviously bring your garbage and your recycling bins back. Um, we had talked about, um, spraying the garbage disposal to kind of keep it lubricated. Um, prior to that, you may also want to clean it just with some vinegar and water. Uh, if you don't already have one, um, you may want to put kind of a wooden stick in your sliding glass door. Um, we have a wooden stick that we've had at our home for over <laughs> for 20 years and the same stick is still doing the same, you know, great, great um, job of just kind of um, preventing being a, a barrier for someone to kind of break into that sliding glass door. Um, as we talked again um, a few slides ago, make if you're going to leave any um, lights on timers uh, or any you know lights that somebody would be turning on on a regular basis if somebody's checking your home, um, make sure to put new light bulbs in those lights. Um, 
you know, I know this sounds really basic and I don't want to be sound too condescending, but really make sure to clean your home thoroughly. Um, there's a lot of pests that can, you know, come in when a home is vacant. So take a look at that. Um, if you are choosing to unplug your refrigerators, then clean them, defrost them, unplug them, um, and then leave everything kind of propped open so that it can air out. Um, also make sure to inspect your home for any openings to reduce the um, likelihood that any pests or rodents could come in. Kind of the, uh, the most awkward calls that I sometimes have to make is, um, you know, that there are, there is evidence of rodents in a home and it's unfortunately somewhat common. Um, so you're going to want to do everything that you can prior to leaving. Um, if you have a fireplace, make sure that flue is closed and make sure, you know, consider having your chimneys inspected. Um, you know, in general, um, check the weather stripping, the insulation on windows and doors and do all you can to kind of secure, batten, batten down the hatches <laughs> as the phrase goes. Um, you may want to spray some insecticides. Uh, you may want to put animal repellent products outside your home and or set up mouse traps. Um, if you do set up mice mouse traps though, make sure someone's checking them regularly and emptying them if needed. I think kind of the one of the it's one of the worst smells <laughs> or very you know very distinguishable smell. Um, before you leave, again this is you know kind of in the maybe months or weeks to ramping up to leaving, uh, make sure to have your or consider at least having your roof inspected depending on how old it is, clean your gutters, um, remove any large limbs that might be hanging over your home. Um, you might want to have your H back system inspected, change the batteries on your smoke or carbon monoxide detectors, change the batteries on your irrigation system. And then this last one regarding the thermostat, I would, it, believe it or not, quite a few thermostats have batteries. I didn't realize this until a couple of years ago. Um, please consider changing the batteries on your thermostat. Um, and anything that um, does require batteries, if you have someone checking your home, you may want to leave some extra batteries out on maybe a dining room table or your kitchen uh, countertop so that they have access to those batteries. A couple of years ago, I um, went into a home I knew prior to entering the home that the temperature of the home had decreased because they had put a red light temperature sensor in the front, uh, in a front window. So as soon as I pulled up, parked in front of the um, home, I could see the red light was on and I knew that the temperature was below a certain set point, was below 50 degrees in the home. I went into the home. It, I could tell <laughs> that it was very cold in the home. Went to the thermostat, checked the thermostat, and unfortunately it was saying low bat. Um, I, I notified the homeowner what was going on, ran across the street to Jewel, picked up some, th um, picked up some, uh, I think it was eight volt or nine volt batteries, uh, came back, replaced the battery. And as soon as I replaced the battery, um, the thermostat, or I'm sorry, the furnace kicked in and, you know, the, obviously the temperature in the uh, home started to rise. Um, so make sure to change those batteries and have extra batteries available if possible. Um, as far as your automobile, um, you may want to have someone start it occasionally. Um, you may also want to place dryer sheets in your automobile, kind of act to act as a pest or rodent repellent. Um, a lot of people that have antique cars, <laughs> that's kind of like their, you know, their trick to protecting their valuable cars is putting those, you know, like the bounce dryer sheets. Um, personally, I always go over to Aldi every fall and just get boxes and boxes of these dryer sheets and then put them in our um, company trucks that are parked for the winter. Uh, you may also consider contacting your mechanic um, to see if there's any specific recommendations for your car. Um, and then also consider contacting your insurance agent and seeing if um, there would be some benefit to you for changing the coverage if you are just, you know, 100% positive that nobody's going to be driving the car while you're gone. Um, golf carts, uh, those can be winterized as well. Uh, again, check your owner's manual or check, you know, if you have a service company. Um, and then you may want to have someone start that for you once a month as well to make sure that, that battery doesn't run down. 
With regards uh, to winterizing your garage, um, drain the fuel out of small engines. Um, if you have any uh, like liquid products like fertilizers or insecticides, you may want to throw those away. Um, you might want to disconnect the garage door opener so that it would be um, you know, less likely that somebody could come into your door that way. And then I would highly, highly recommend that you lock the door from your home to your garage. Usually that's like leading into a pantry or a, um, you know, like a laundry room. Make sure to lock that door. If you have a basement, um, consider installing a battery backup sump pump. And then also, as we talked about earlier in the presentation, some sort of sump pump monitoring system so that you know um, if there's a problem with your sump pump. I know, we're com I know we're covering a lot of information, and I guess the advantage of uh, this class being in this format is it's information that you can kind of go back and review if there's, if there's something that you want to take another look at. Um, some general tips. Um, you may want to contact your credit card company or debit card company to let them know that you're going to be out of town so that you're not... Um, you know, in Florida, and they are suddenly, um, you know, calling you because they see a, a charge on your card. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, my daughter Mary and I were driving back, driving in Texas, uh, and that's exactly what happened to me. <laughs> I, I charged some gas in Texas. I got a notification from my credit card company. They were questioning, you know, why we were, I was buying gas in Texas when I lived in Illinois. <laughs> um, if you um, do have an emergency contact, I would make sure to leave that information with your neighbor. Um, so, you know, let's just kind of give you the scenario that um, there's a you know package outside your door, your um, neighbor finds the package, they try to contact you, they can't contact you, and, you know, then what should they do next? Or, you know, God, I hate to... I hate to be kind of the girl who cried wolf here, but, you know, let's say your your house is burning down. Um, unfortunately, there have been several fires in the community. Your house is burning down. Um, you, your neighbor tries to contact you. They can't get a hold of you. Well, then who do they contact next? Who, you know, who's kind of next on their call list? Um, I would make sure that you kind of think about who that emergency contact is and make sure that a neighbor or whoever is watching your home has that information. Um, years and years ago, there was a death in our family, um, and I was trying to get a hold of my grandparents, and it was just tremendously frustrating that I didn't have their contact information. And I honestly, I think I spent half the day just trying to notify, to get a hold of them to notify them of this death. Um, I know we talked about this before, but just really make sure that everything is locked. Um, and then the, the next bullet point, um, I would highly, high, you know, as much as we all want to, you know, post pictures of us, you know, standing in the Grand Canyon or, um, you know, on a beach in Key West, um, really um, be very, very careful about posting upcoming travel plans or when you're out of town, um, the fact that you're out of town on social media. Oftentimes that's pretty accessible to people who, again, you don't want to know that you're out of town. Um, I, uh, a, a friend, actually a cousin of mine, um, about probably six years ago, um, was, you know, so excited to be coming up to Illinois. She posted it on social media and then she posted some pictures when she was here. And then unfortunately their home was broken into. So they came home and their home had broke broken into. No, of course, you know, you don't know for sure if that's why, but you know, she was just, you know, questioning whether that, that was a good idea to post that. And then, you know, she's made the decision in the future. She will not do that. Um, Again, some more general tips before you leave. I would encourage you, as simple as it sounds, go around and take pictures of your home or maybe even a video so that you have a really, you know, concrete evidence of what your home looked like in case you get home and you're kind of questioning things. And just, you know, now that virtually all of us have a um, camera on our smartphones, it's pretty easy to take, um, you know, to take all those pictures. Um, and then also my kids have, um, have really taught me this. Um, if there's something that you want to remember or have with you, 
take a picture of it. So um, if you, if I don't know, there's like a medication label that you want to take a picture of, or or maybe you have a book that has everybody's you know phone numbers in it, and you don't necessarily want to bring the book itself. We'll just snap pictures of any pages that you want and bring it with with you and then you can just kind of scroll through your phone or your tablet to find that information without actually having the the object with you it just makes packing a little a little bit easier a little bit lighter so i am so sorry i cannot answer any questions in this format uh, but i am in my contact information was included at the beginning of this video. If there's anything that you have questions on, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to um, to reach back out to you. Um, here's my phone number, my email address, um, follow up at any time, and I'd, I would be happy to address your questions. Um, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope that I know that traveling during a pandemic is particularly worrisome, but I hope that if you do choose to travel that everything is safe, um, your, your end destination as well as your home here in this community. So thanks again um, and stay safe.